In 2022, frozen food sales in the U.S. reached over $72 billion. Demand has been rapidly growing. Throughout COVID, we had among the highest sales in all of the food space. Behind this seemingly simple idea, there's a sophisticated supply chain keeping perishables frozen. Each step is very critical. The products have to maintain proper temperature throughout a complex network of refrigerated trucks and cold storage facilities. Should the temperature vary, it can become unsafe. But it's not just about keeping ice cream from melting. The percentages are remarkable in terms of what's tossed in frozen items because of inadequate cold storage temperature. And the refrigeration tech is often outdated. We're still relying on centuries old technology. The weak link in cold chain logistics, planes, trains, automobiles, is how to deliver any perishable good at the appropriate temperature. Major players in the global frozen food market include privately held Cargill, ConAgra, Nestle, General Mills, and Unilever. So the consumers are buying more frozen product. It's going to require more storage capability and a more efficient supply chain. The perishables are poised to profit. And so are those investing in really cold properties. Supply chain issues and labor challenges haven't really gone away in the food industry. Where's the stuff? Without resilient supply chain infrastructure, the growth and safety of the massive $265 billion global frozen food market is at risk. Can cold storage supply chains keep up with frozen food demand? Virtually all American households purchase frozen food at least once a year. Since 2019, sales have grown by 23%, according to the American Frozen Food Institute. When COVID happened, when supply chain, everything got shut down, you saw a huge spike in frozen food, sometimes 30, 40, 50% year over year basis. Frozen foods demand was supercharged during the pandemic in the U.S., bringing in over $65 billion in 2020. The pandemic taught consumers to invest in bulk buying. Frozen foods were some of the best selling items during the pandemic since they can be really stored for long periods of time. We're seeing that growth continue. We saw about a 20% growth during COVID, which was really very rapid and fast. Most frozen food products reported double digit increases. We did a recent survey and found that over 80% of consumers look to frozen to reduce in-home food waste and also save money. The main driver is cost. What can consumers afford? One a great study by Cornell that looked into how much waste the average consumer has between both fresh and frozen. And what they found was for, with frozen food, you're five times more likely not to encounter food waste. Every year, roughly $1,300 is spent by the average American on food that ends up as waste. You know, Cargill produces enough protein to feed 170 million people around the world. So that's enough to feed the entire country of Bangladesh every single day. The frozen category, really seeing things like variety meats more likely to be purchased frozen. At the end of the day, it's about that 4 p.m. dinner tonight decision, right? A great variety of dinners is promised. The dinner is packed and ready for sub-zero storage. Where the industry has come a long way since the 1930s when Clarence Birdseye pioneered a flash freezing technique that better preserved foods. Before then, the market was known for tasteless and textureless products. Quick freezing is one of the newer ways of keeping foods. Meat, fruit, vegetables. He won consumers over. I'm Please. sorry, but I already have a frozen food man in the 1950s and 60s became the golden age of food freezing. Birdseye Hawaiian style international vegetable. That flash freezing technique is still how a lot of frozen products are made today, particularly with mechanical freezing. Think frozen plates and conveyor belts for contact freezing or the air blast method, which is one of the oldest and commonly used. That's when cold air fills a room of food to freeze it. Freezing technology really hasn't gained leaps and bounds. Blast freezing, and what that means is, let's say strawberries are coming out of a field in California. We'll take those warm strawberries out of the field as soon as they're cleaned, and then we'll blast them down to negative 20 degrees and then store them so then later they can be consumed. The air blasting technique also utilizes individual quick freezing. 
aka IQF. And IQF, what it does is it frees individual pieces of food, and that does two things. One, the speed of the freezing helps reduce the size of the ice crystal, so it helps preserve the integrity of the food when it's thawed or cooked. You, you want to freeze at that, that peak of freshness, and that's really a, an aspect that when, whether you look at meat or vegetables, a lot of industries have really focused on communicating that message as well. The other way food can be frozen is cryogenic freezing. It uses liquid nitrogen or carbon dioxide to get to extremely low temperatures quickly. But it can be more expensive for companies to invest and switch to the cryogenic techniques, plus the cost of nitrogen added to that. However, cryogenic freezing is much faster since that liquid nitrogen is so cold. One estimate puts mechanical freezing at nearly an hour to freeze fruits and veggies, while cryogenic freezing could take 11 minutes. It's all about speed. The faster food can freeze, the smaller ice crystals that form, which ultimately creates a higher quality product. Our data scientists heard that we were not blasting strawberries fast enough in California. The algorithm based on computational fluid dynamics that were able to reduce the freeze cycle from three days down to one to two days. So not only are you reducing the lead time of freezing the berries, but we're using less energy to do that. How to freeze food is just the first half of the equation. Frozen foods need a robust and sustainable cold storage supply chain to reach consumers. Even Birdseye recognized this in the late 1920s when convincing Americans to try frosted foods. He created his own refrigerated boxcars for trains and leased freezers out to retailers. The U.S. still transports a lot of food by truck. In the U.S., we're, we're very fortunate, but in other developing countries, we're seeing an investment in the cold chain to try and keep the agricultural products preserved for year-round consumption. It's really a way of preventing food waste globally. Approximately 13% of all food produced globally is lost due to poor cold storage every year. That wasted food could have fed an estimated 950 million people. 10th annual Disruptor 50 list, our fastest growing private companies challenging public incumbents. Number three, Lineage Logistics, improving the food supply chain to prevent waste with a proprietary freezing process. Lineage serves big name customers, including Walmart and McDonald's. Lineage Logistics focuses on the frozen food market and part of its mission is decreasing global food waste. And so we provide frozen and chilled warehousing, 450 warehouses across 20 countries. Let's use salmon as an example. Salmon will be harvested up in the Pacific Northwest. Salmon will immediately be packaged, put into one of our freezers that package salmon across the country, may go to a retail store, and then finally to the consumers at home. It may end up moving to a restaurant where the final consumer then purchases. But we're helping to move that food through the entire cold chain and ensuring that it, it, it keeps a safe temperature the entire way. The supply chain weaknesses garnered international attention when the coronavirus pandemic struck. COVID really showed how fragile the supply chain system is. That really exposed huge gaps in being able to transport in frozen food and even refrigerated food in the U.S. At the same time, it's expensive to generate power to keep the entire supply chain frozen. Being able to minimize costs uh, in different ways, whether you're using kind of different software, AI, robotics, freezing technology, driverless technology to transport the product from point A to point B, like that is the biggest pain point. Our, our data scientists have looked at the, the space that's used in our freezers because they consume a lot of energy and, and we want to make sure that we're using every square inch of that facility with frozen food. They've created algorithms to be able to see where are we not using some of that cubic space and how can we optimize that, that usage. We have been able to create over 300,000 additional pallet positions of frozen food that is equivalent to a 3 million square foot freezer. Food waste also contributes to unnecessary emissions. And that's a ticking time bomb that Phenonic aims to defuse. Number 17 on the list is Phenonics, a semiconductor company that is reinventing the refrigerator. <laughs> Through the power of semiconductor innovation, we are sustainably transforming global cooling. 
So core to our platform is a semiconductor chip that when powered, generates coldness. Phenonic embraces solid state cooling with semiconductor devices that cool and freeze products in the cold chain fulfillment process. So Phenonic really developed the ecosystem and now are delivering solutions poised to disrupt an almost $50 billion global market. Cold is super hot if you're in the cold storage warehouse business. Why? It's because of your Amazon press, your Peapod by Giant, the new food delivery services driving it literally from the warehouse to your home. Online grocery sales soared over the pandemic, fueling frozen food sales with a 75% increase in 2020. It's expensive right now to ship by e-commerce frozen products because it needs to stay cold. How do we get product either from retail to the consumer using e-commerce and or from other distribution points straight to the consumer. While that may be convenient for a consumer, it makes warehouse management a nightmare. So much so that now in almost every case, retailers lose almost $13 in an online grocery delivery. Phenonic developed an end-to-end -end cold chain solution, not just hardware, that includes actively refrigerated and frozen totes, but also the IoT connectivity that allows the consumer to know exactly where their order is from the minute it was placed to the time that they pick it up. Phenonic is leasing these reusable totes to grocery stores and retailers. And that gives the grocer, the warehouse, and the last mile delivery solutions provider tremendous flexibility, saving labor, saving on energy costs, but more importantly, increasing order throughput to meet those online demands. We're seeing the, the e-commerce side of, of the cold chain growing, and we've acquired two companies to really be able to give us some, some infrastructure there, because it does require a different layout of the facility and different technology. And while the number of households buying online leveled out in 2022, what continued to grow was the frequency of orders and the money spent per order. The pandemic surge in frozen food consumption has shown staying power from purchases in stores to online orders. I don't see that changing at all. To be able to not only feed yourself, but feed your family something that it doesn't take two hours to cook, to cook, that is a huge factor as well that's driving frozen, frozen food sales. I like to call it the convenience continuum. So when you think from a consumer standpoint, it's the let me do it, do it with me, or do it for me. And frozen foods can really play in all three of those spaces. Between the demand growth, retailer engagement, and industry innovations, the frozen food market is looking strong, according to the American Frozen Food Institute. They want cold and frozen items in particular almost instantaneously. So we view ourselves as not just a facilitator of coldness, but a facilitator of e-commerce itself. Once consumers get used to the convenience, it's really tough to go back.